Polyphonic Press, the podcast where two music fans pick a classic album completely at random. Using the patented random album generator, they are given an album to review from a curated list of over 1,000 classic releases spanning multiple genres. And now on to the show. Here are your hosts, Jeremy Boyd and John Van Dyke. All right, hey, welcome to Polyphonic Press. I'm Jeremy Boyd. I'm John Van Dyke. And uh, let's not waste any time. We've got the patented random album generator right in front of us here. Uh, so let's hit the button and see what album we're going to be listening to this week. And the album we're going to be listening to is Robbie Williams' Life Through a Lens. I know he's a UK pop singer. So this is what it says on allmusic.com. One of the best UK debuts of the 90s, Life Through a Lens is an unhibited joyride through all manner of British music, from glam to alternative to soft rock to dance pop. Beginning with the joyous Lazy Days, the album continuous, continually betrays overt influences from Oasis and other Brit pop stars, but triumphs nevertheless due to gorgeous production William's irresistible personality and the overall flavor of outrageous, utterly enjoyable pop music, whether he's ramping or whether he's romping through aggressive burners like Ego A Go Go and South of the Border, crooning on the ballad Angels, or offering a slice of life, working class um, style on the title track and Lazy Days, Williams is a pop star through and through. For those who appreciate great pop with plenty of cheek, Life Through a Lens is an excellent album. So this uh, so this was released on uh, 29th of September, 1997. Uh, genres are pop, rock, Brit pop, pop rock, and power pop. Uh, released on Chrysalis Records and produced by Guy Chambers and Steve Power. And so we, we encourage everyone to, to listen along. But uh, there's we there's no uh, so what we do is we uh, take a pause halfway through the album. Usually, if it's an older album, it's side one, side two. But this is uh, right in the '90s, so everything was being released on CD. So there's no real side one or side two. But there's 12 tracks on the the, the album. So what we'll do is we'll just listen to six and six. And so we encourage you to listen along. And I've linked the uh, the album to Apple Music and Spotify in the show notes so you can get the album there. And without further ado, so well, so the album, it starts with the song Lazy Days and we'll stop after the sixth track, which is Old Before I Die. Okay, so here is the first song on the album called Lazy Days. So here we go. And ending side or part one, uh, the first half of the album with "Old Before I Die." Um, yeah, I don't. There, this album. Um, I'm having a hard time getting attached to it. Same. Uh, it has everything that I should like. Like it's got moments that I like. Yeah, it's got every. But, well, what I'm what I'm finding is it's got everything that I should like. It's got guitars. It's got his voice is like very, like very like Brit pop that sort of gritty like it's not a clean voice it's you know it's got some grit to it and um and like the the songs are okay the like the the chords and everything but I just there's something that's not connecting with me yeah I find um. Whereas, like, like some of the songs have, like, moments that I thought were really groovy. I thought Ego A Go Go was kind of fun. But uh, most of the, like, I think there was, like, a moment towards the end of South of the Border that I thought was kind of funny. Or funny. Fun, funky. the Anyway. Yeah, isn't that funny? Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and Old Before I Die wasn't such a bad th- song. But it, I don't know. <clears throat> they... This the uh, structure of the song just kind of comes out kind of flat sometimes, and uh, um, I'm not sure how to do that. Maybe it's just sort of the genre, like pop does that. 
Maybe, but like, I don't know. This isn't really pop in the sense of, well, I guess it kind of is. Like, it's it's like, well, like when, when Oasis, a second album came out, what's the story in Morning Glory? And it has it has everything that this album has. And I like that album. And but there's it's almost like they're this album is sort of hopping on that trend because for a while in like 1995, 96, Oasis were the biggest band in the world. And and it's almost like he's trying to jump on that trend. And it it kind of it feels a little bit inauthentic here. It feels a little bit like trying to do something that's popular at the time rather than making an album that he would make. Because it has some elements that, like, it has everything that I like about this period of of music. Like, the production quality, like, everything. I, but I can't, but it just, it doesn't, something feels off to me. Yeah, and I kind of feel the same way like there's there's something mi- missing and it's very hard to put your fing- finger on it but i think it's just i think for me it's just the songwriting itself is the songs seem a little bit flat sometimes or it just kind of la da 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 as opposed to doing something interesting um that doesn't say like there's no interesting parts on this album there were and i mentioned them um but yeah that's just what it is for me there, there is an, um, there is, uh, this is on Wikipedia and there, there was a, um, a review from Melody Maker it says writing for Melody Maker in October, 1997, Robin Bresnark gave life through a lens and negative review it says there's nothing here. Sure. Robbie Williams is as fascinating, a, a hapless goon as we're ever likely to come across, but this album feels more like a press release than an album. And that's not what I call music. And I kind of like, that's kind of the perfect sort of, yeah, that the kind yeah. of sums it up. It's like, Hey, I'm making an album that sounds like this rather than I want, this is the, the kind of album I want to make. And Robbie Williams started out as a singer in a boy band, a British boy band called take that. Uh, they were more popular in the UK than they were here in North America, but, um, it just, it, it has kind of that feel of a boy band singer, the breakout star of a boy band. And now this is his solo album It has like a Justin Timberlake sort of not, not in the sound, but the way it's presented. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know what you mean. Um, there was the one Justin Timberlake album that I thought was actually kind of interesting. And I think it was towards the beginning of his career that I thought, Oh, he's doing something funky. He's doing something kind of cool. Um, he seemed to have strayed away from that. I don't know why, but S- uh, sell more records. <laughs> sell more records, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it sort of does come across that that way to me as well. I don't hate it, but it's it seems a little lackluster. Yeah, exactly. It's just uh, it's okay. It's mediocre. It's you know. It's it's fine. <laughs> That's what I can. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. <laughs> Except sometimes that is a, that something is wrong with it, especially if it's something like art. So art's supposed to do something for you. It's not supposed to just exist because oh, I need to put out art. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. But I so I guess we'll get into uh, side two or the second half. Um, hopefully it picks up a little bit and, uh, here is, uh, the first song on the second side called one of God's better people. So here we go. Okay. And ending the album with baby girl window with the bonus track, or the hidden track, Hello, Sir. Um, yeah, the second half was kind of more of the same. Yeah, large. I kind of like the song Clean. I thought that one was kind of fun. Um, it was a pretty good song. Um, Killing Me was very Beatlesque in places, but it still had the same problem with having 
where the the main verses were still kind of flat, but the you know the guitar through the Leslie and the way the orchestration was was very Beatles esque. Um, and I think he was definitely trying to do a Beatles type song with that one, um, which isn't bad. I mean, if you're gonna go for songwriters, going for you know. If you're going to mimic songwriters, mimicking the Beatles is not exactly the worst thing to do. You could do worse. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, I agree. I mean, there were, there were some spots that I, that I thought were okay, but, um, but again, yeah, overall, I think the album, it just lacks that sort of, um, it lacks the spark. It lacks the spark. Exactly. It just feels a little bit uninspired. Like it's feels like, it feels like a chore not to not to listen to necessarily but like he it feels like he's making out an album because he has to make an album you know what i mean like it, it is not really inspired to make an album he's just kind of well i've left the band now i have to start my solo career what am i going to do okay well I'll, you know i'll do this but I, I, like kudos to him for honestly he he did write all the songs so at least, like, I can respect him for that, for not going the route of hiring a bunch of songwriters and being given songs. But maybe, I don't know. I, I, it's hard. It, it's You think he maybe needs a co-writer or something? Well, he does have a co-writer. He wrote all the songs with somebody. Okay. Um, and, but the, the thing is, like, it just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's quite there as a songwriter yet. He seems to be a bit of a poet towards the end there. That was kind of cool. But. Yeah, that was all right. And, um, but I think, I think if, if maybe, because I think this came out like just less than a year after he left the the group. And I think it, it goes to back to that old saying where like it, uh, you know, a band has their whole, like their whole life, like 10 years to write their first album and then their second album, they uh, write it, have to write it in six weeks or whatever it is. And maybe, like, the, even though this is his first album, this is his first solo endeavor. Solo and he didn't en- have a lot of time to put it together. Right. He, it, it's like he didn't have a back catalog of stuff that he was writing for his, himself while he was in the band. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's sort of like, well, I wrote a song, put it on the album. Wrote a song, put it on the album. Well, it kind of reminds me of that Paul McCartney album, the first one. Except I think I enjoyed it a little bit better, but it was just little bits and pieces of stuff that he did. Because everything he wrote up till that point was going to be in the Beatles. Um, Yeah, it's uh, sort of interesting. I I really wonder how long he actually did take to write this album. Well, it's this is sort of a little bit of information here. It says... After trying hard to find his own sound during a period of personal upheaval, Williams began recordings for the album at London's Mason Rouge Studios in March 1997, shortly after his introduction to Guy Chambers. So that, that's the other songwriter, Guy Chambers, that he was working with. Um, the title track, Life Through a Lens, was written about his then-girlfriend Jacqueline Hamilton Smith, who was a socialite. Uh, it is often mistaken at it's mistakenly attributed to Tara Palmer Tompkins, but they did not start dating until 2006. Um, the sound of the album is influenced by Britpop, especially Ben. So it doesn't really say much about the songwriting process. But yeah, I have a f- like the the last well the last take that album that he was on was uh, 1995. So yeah. But it says he he met his co write he met the co writer shortly before this. Yeah, so they're so, they're not writing a whole lot. They don't have a whole lot of time. Yeah, between. So it does seem to be almost a bit of a rush job. Yeah, that that can sometimes hurt things. It's almost dare I say it's actually turned out pretty well considering the time that they put it out. Um, certainly in places. Um. There, there's there's little sparks of magic in little little tiny areas, but overall, I just I can't get attached to this album. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel the same way. Um, yeah, it's just it's just not quite there. The um, his next album, I think, is might be a little better. He had a big hit 
in America with that album. Uh, you might remember the song Millennium. Maybe. And that probably was around the Millennium. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that'll help. That's a better song. It's still a pop song, but it's still a, it's a better song okay. than what I've heard here. But that could also be just my my appreciating it now through nostalgia because I remember it when I was a kid type of thing. Maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think he did get a little better as time went on. Um, it's just a shame because this is his like rock album, and I right. wait like yeah, I I, I want better. to like it more than I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so that that brings us to the the inevitable question: Would you listen to this again? Uh, probably not. Yeah. 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 I I I feel the same way. I I probably wouldn't listen to this again. There isn't all, really a song. There's all the albums out there that even of all the ones that, that that we say we probably would listen to again. Honestly, how many of them are we gonna listen to again? Well, so this one kind of is low on the list. Yeah, it's like there isn't really much. There isn't a standout. There isn't even a, a song on here that I would, I would never. I like. I don't think I would object to it if it was on somewhere that I was out. But I don't think there is even a song that I would say oh, I, I want to hear that again, or I, you know, I need to hear that. There, I, yeah, I just can't. I just, I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't think so. Um. So anyway, yeah, I guess we'll end the uh, episode there. Thank you so much for listening if you made it this far. Uh, we want to hear from you whether you agree or disagree with the album. Uh, you can go, uh, you can drop us a line and go to the uh, contact page of our website, polyphonicpress.com slash contact. And uh, while you're there, you can check out past episodes. And uh, if you feel inclined, you can also help us out on Patreon at helps us keep the show going and um, all those links are in the show notes so if you're on whatever uh, listening app you're on um, you can click the link there and while you're there leave us a review uh, because it helps us uh, you know helps us know how we're doing Uh, and I think that just about does it Uh, I'm Jeremy Boyd I'm John Van Dyke take it easy